Grand. Ghana is a beautiful country. There is so much of it you probably haven't seen, haven't experienced, haven't touched, haven't felt, haven't eaten. When this is all over, let's discover our land again with new eyes. Let's feel each other again. We are one people, brought together by destiny. Let's make that count. Let's show love for each other and our environment. Let's tell our stories. And let's watch and listen to our stories. There will be so much to tell. Ghana is a truly beautiful country. Be Ghana. Stay in Ghana. Experience Ghana. Make Ghana great. And we will invite the world to come and experience Ghana too. Brought to you by the National Film Authority. This channel supports the campaign. Hello, thank you so much for joining us. Today is International Women's Day and we are having a special edition on Breaking Barriers, a journey towards gender equality at the workplace. My name is Conrad Kakraba. On this International Women's Day, we take a stand to challenge some limiting beliefs about women and celebrate their achievements. Women have been fighting for equal rights and opportunities for centuries, but there are still many misconceptions that hold them back. And in this special edition of Breaking Barriers, we will explore some of these beliefs and show how employers and HR managers can support women in breaking these barriers and forging new paths. Now, I have two guests here. There is another one that will also uh, share her views. So we have here um, an HR <laughs> person. So he is... Um, uh, Eric Edemdamanka, the Group Head of Talent or HR and then Corporate Affairs at BTL Africa. BTL Africa. He said BTL means what? Beyond the Line Africa. Beyond the Line Africa. Mm -hmm. So they manage a lot of brands and uh, so he's the Group Head of Talent and HR and Corporate Affairs. And then also um, we have Mata and Nabila She's a women empowerment activist. She's a TV show host and then also CEO of Mata Inspires Foundation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and then also the one that will join us in the course of the discussion, she is Janet MFA Agbedo. She is an HR consultant at Tech Optimal. She's a recruiter and then executive resume writer. Thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure. Thank you, for, Thank having you yeah. for having us. So let's start with MFA. Yes. Yeah, so, how do you feel about International Women's Day, a day set aside to celebrate you people? <laughs> I think it's a very special day. Yeah. One that is really, really needed because women in the past have really fought mm -hmm. and we're still fighting mm -hmm. to ensure that there is fairness, there is equal representation, and we get the opportunity to access opportunities that every gender is looking out for. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that those outcomes that are available for all genders, women are not excluded from that. So mm -hmm. it's actually a good day to also celebrate and acknowledge all the support that some women have sacrificed yeah. and the impact women continue to make. So it's a day that we really have to prioritize and make sure that we really get the best out of yeah. it. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Martha, let's start by hearing any personal story of yours that limiting beliefs you know about limiting beliefs and the time that you faced some of those beliefs and uh, how you were able to handle that situation as a woman well i think that um discrimination against women started long time ago mm -hmm. not just now in certain perspective even from culture even from religion unfortunately 
women have been discriminated. Certain people believe that a woman cannot stand in the church and even preach or even talk. In certain religions, a woman can't do certain things. Now, coming back to our day and age now, we still have those things there. I'm young. There are certain times that I go to certain places and they're like, I'm a small girl. I can't have certain opportunities. I'm qualified by educational standards, by experience, by everything. But just because I'm a woman, they are telling me that, okay, women are not allowed to do certain things. Then, of course, by age, I didn't ask myself to be born <laughs> later. But they tell you that, no, you are young to do this. Or they'll say, let a man do that. So because of that, people believe that even a woman can't get married after 30. Not can't get married, but it's late for you to get married after 30. So women who get married after 30 or 35, they tell them that, oh, you are expired. We have those kind of things that women go through. That's kind of discrimination. Childbirth is one. Some places that I've, I've heard about from the work that we do, when you even give birth to twins, they will kill the children and tell them that it's 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 what it's it's mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah twins are an abomination. FGM mm -hmm. is still happening even in this year. We female. Just, yeah, female genital mutilation is still happening just because you are a woman. Because if that is not taken out, you will cheat on your husband. Mm -hmm. This is a belief that only God knows where it's coming from. Uh, and then you shared with me. I mean, in the show I had with you about. Sometimes when you go for like to certain mm. places, yes, you have to let your yes. man yes. go ahead and yeah. ask for permission. Yeah. Not allow there it. are times that I go out with my team mm -hmm. and then um, as a woman, nobody would even want to mind you because I they see. feel that you don't uh, have what it takes to come in front of certain elders. So there are times that I go with my team. I'm the leader, I'm the boss. I pay them. <laughs> <laughs> I brought them in the team. But because I'm a woman, they have to go and ask for the permission. Yeah. They are telling somebody comes and then they are like, okay, where is your boss? And they are, they are talking and they are looking at the man because they can't assume that a small girl like me is leading them. So sometimes I call most of them David and Goliath. They are Goliath and I'm the David. <laughs> <laughs> because they are tall and huge. Damn. So you see, these things happen. Yeah. You go to certain places as well. And even as you are speaking, they tell you that... Uh, you, you shouldn't talk like that. Mm. So recently, my mom calls me and tells me that she was watching reflection show with some people. And I sometimes I love to sit and cross my leg like this. So if you watch a reflection show, I do that a lot. Yeah. And people say that it, it, it doesn't show respect. Mm. People that came to tell my mom they've been watching me. So my cousin and I'm the TV, so me and boom. So they want me to come in. Yeah, good evening, my <laughs> because people and they are, and and this was her argument. Yeah. Oh, you are a woman. If you do that, you go and meet your in laws. So you go and meet, like so. But a man can do that. <laughs> so everything about a woman is because you were a woman. Because you are, um, you, you, you you grow up to become someone's wife. Of course, I want to be married one day, but my life shouldn't be evolved on just that. Okay. Maybe I am just sitting in a particular way because I'm not comfortable or because I want to cross my legs to cover up myself or something you might never know. I see. Interesting. Um, Adam, you are an HR manager and uh, <laughs> you, you... What, what kind of... Um, environments have you people built for <laughs> for the women to, <laughs> to have you had challenges personally yeah. so uh Conrad, thanks for the opportunity yeah. for us to talk yeah. about this yeah uh, i think that everybody who is human should should have a stake in this i do earlier start saying that. okay it's, indeed it's not my lived experience because yeah. i'm not woman <laughs> but i'm human <laughs> and the fact that i'm human it means that what affects the other gender if you yeah, so yeah. say you know affects me like i have a mother i have a wife <laughs> i have children, children daughters yeah. you know and we would want to create a world that is equitable and equal mm. where they can actualize their potential yeah i mean on international women's day this year the team for the un has talked about digital yeah that is uh, innovation and technology for gender equity yeah but i see also on the international women's dot uh, com website mm -hmm. they're talking about embracing equity yeah. so the campaign really about limiting beliefs yeah. what are the negative beliefs what are the assumptions yeah. what are the biases and the prejudices mm -hmm. that are affecting women out there lots of it in the workplace 
Well, I've had and as a consultant, mm -hmm. I've worked as a consultant in many capacities mm -hmm. for HR mm -hmm. before mainstream HR. And some of the businesses and places you go to, mm -hmm. you hear the prevailing notion of people thinking that women are not capable of leading mm -hmm. and making decisions yeah. at the top level of de yeah. decision making. So they're actually excluded at the top. Mm -hmm. I was involved in um, a research whilst I was seven as a um, uh, TA at the University of Ghana yeah. on women on board, and you realize that the segment of women on most of organizational boards are limited simply because of some of these biases. I see. People think that when women get pregnant, you know, and, and employers, and some actually really think like that this in this age, mm. that when they get pregnant, and you know, the labor law allows for 12 week maternity leave in Ghana, okay. in Ghana situation. So that's like about 84 days. Mm -hmm. Some employers think that that is a time where they lose money mm -hmm. but don't get value for it. It's I strange, see. but that's how they think. They see. think that if I have to give maternity leave mm -hmm. to a woman, yeah. mm -hmm. and depending on where they sit in the business, yeah. if it's at the highest level within the business, yeah. that means that they are possibly taking three figure more, mm -hmm. more salaries. Mm -hmm. you know. So for three months, the employer thinks that. I'm not going to get anything from her. And I'm going to have sometimes to that even for because sometimes some will add the annual leave. Yes, they add and be home. So there is that whole notion mm -hmm. around it. So some employers, unfortunately, and which is against the labor law, I was telling you earlier mm. on. I mean, you can't discriminate against women. The labor law protects women in the mm. country. But some people also, you know, I hear some places when you get employed mm. as a woman, you can't get pregnant mm. within a certain kind yeah, of so that's range. against the labor law like i said and it actually takes more education for us and that's why i said mm. i'm glad we, we have these conversations okay. because then if an organization exists like that it yeah. can be taken on by the labor commission i see if they're reported mm. because you're that's discrimination against women mm. I see. you know so there's that education that needs to be done for employers mm. and for hr managers to push more policies that are friendly, and I'm sure we're going to talk mm, have that mm, conversation. Okay. That that makes the yeah. environment healthy yeah. and and very equitable for women yeah. to be able to flourish and yeah. have opportunities with the workplace. So there's all of these limiting beliefs yeah. about the fact that women are emotional in decision making, mm -hmm. so they shouldn't be put there. Mm -hmm. People think that women are not capable, so they they shouldn't be put in leadership position to make decision. People think that women eventually. Would choose family over the job, oh, so yeah. <laughs> they shouldn't be put there. Yeah. You know, all of these exist in most businesses. But I'm glad we're having all of this conversation. And there's so much that has been done by advocacy groups mm. and women empowerment organization that have pushed the limit. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of changes have, have been made, but there still exists so, much of yeah. them in most yeah. businesses as well. MFA, personally, you've worked at different places. Yeah. I mean. How, what are some of the things you see that are not the best Great. for women? For women. <laughs> yeah. So women by, by sex or yeah. by gender, gender yeah. face um, a lot of barriers. Aside the perceptive barrier. Okay, the barrier so there, there are perceptive barriers, in, things that people think about women. Exactly. Okay, we'll talk about them. We'll but talk about them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, physically at the workplaces, mm. women are um, faced with... Navigating flexibility at the workplace. Okay, tell at me the about that. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the structures and the systems are sometimes not flexible for women. For it's women. very rigid. Mm. I mean, for a woman to go out, I mean, when it's time for a woman to deliver and goes on maternity leave, mm. you want to find out the implications that prevail when she returns yeah. back to work. Mm -hmm. Is she entitled or does she get the same opportunities that other colleagues are getting mm -hmm. or other I mean the other gender is getting in terms of promotion. Okay. In terms of other career opportunities that are available mm -hmm. for everybody on that plateau. Usually what we observe is that women sometimes suffer. Mm -hmm. It's either they, they don't get the promotion they deserve mm -hmm. or they, they they just get stuck at okay. where they are. And this is one difficult thing that I mean in, in the in the multinationals yeah. or the international firms, we don't really see this because we see the representation, we see the effort made to alleviate this challenge. Yeah. But I think in the in the smaller organizations we find, we still see that this is very prevalent. Mm. It becomes difficult for women who go on I mean, maternity leave and come back, to, for them to really pick up from where they left off yeah. and move. Yes. Yeah. So 
we're still hoping and praying that going forward, we would see some changes mm. at the workplace. Aside the flexibility that even happens at the workplace, we are still discussing issues around women on International Women's Day, and MFA is here uh, helping me to understand some of these issues. So you were talking about um, some of the structures that are not favorable to women. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what what you talked about perceptive something something. The perceptive <laughs> barriers. barriers. Yes. So tell me about that. Yes. So those perceptive barriers are literally imaginary. You don't see them, but it's it's in that state where in organizations, women feel they can't get to some levels. Okay. Or in, they in, themselves feel that, feel way. that way. People also think, think that, that way. way. Exactly, okay. yes. And usually it's because over a period, yeah. that has been the norm. So there's that time. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and even sometimes it becomes very physical mm -hmm. because you know that in this organization, you can go as far as um, a manager. Yeah. You can you can be an executive director. Exactly. You can't be... Um, you can't be the CEO. Mm. You can't take decisions at the C-suite. Mm. You can't even get to the C-suite. Mm. So women are not even challenged to to even think of navigating those those barriers. But it's important that we that we, we, we we prioritize the talent pool right from the onset. Mm. When organizations are looking to bring in people, how are we bringing in people? How are we bringing in women? How are we training them? How are we preparing them for the future of work? How are we even conscientizing them to think about um, the top yeah. and how best they can build their kids at the top and remain at the top and not feel alone. Mm. Because now as we speak, we have very few women at the top who are alone, who are lonely. Because, <laughs> they, do yeah, we don't, in terms of representation, we don't see much women there. I mean, a lot of women there, it's male-dominated still, although you see um, a few women. Even our part of it, for example, is a case in point. Exactly. And it's because sometimes... The willingness is not there. Some people say, you know, it's a cut and uh, is it a right and cut <laughs> root or how would you be it's, it's a cut competition. And so yes. it's like and that's, survival of the fittest. Yes. And but it's, it it's, be so, you think? Yes, I think it's, it's because that, that sector has been male-dominated for God knows how many years. But and other places, I mean, the, the story is different. You know, some countries, I mean, they have... Is it uh, Ethiopia or one of those? Yeah, yeah. African countries. Yeah. It's like fifty percent or so, and that it's shows it's that maybe uh, I've not really studied what yeah. really goes into, into the way they themselves have. Maybe there is an affirmative action, action. that can leave this number of seats for women and blah blah blah. In I think. Our society, yeah, I think you know <laughs> another thing might be willingness. Maybe okay. that particular sector is is not very attractive mm -hmm. for women. Mm -hmm. Now and then again, you see women in general. We are navigating a lot of things at the same time. Okay. Once we get to a particular point, we want to make time for family, yeah. take care of family and all yeah, of that. Very, and very usually it becomes difficult at that point to combine. Yes. You see, and most of the time we find because of the maternal aspect of women, yeah. you find women choosing to make time for their families, time for their families. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. once they, they are able to get a point where they believe their children can can go to school then, yeah, then now they want to be prepared now. yes and i think that is also very important mm -hmm. because our future as a country also depends on the children that we are yeah. bringing up today so if if parents or if a woman or a parent doesn't make time to invest to time. to ensure quality time is yeah. spent we are literally Perfect. leaving our future i mean yes defenseless mm -hmm. so that is why organizations have to have this um approach where there is some form of flexibility for women mm -hmm. where you can, I mean, provide for a compressed week so that instead of um, a woman coming to work um, consistently for five days, mm -hmm. she can work three, three times in a week okay. and then probably work from home. Mm -hmm. I mean, the shadow has to be flexible Absolutely. such that it can be accommodative of the needs of the woman who is caring for the child mm -hmm. and all of that. And even that, fast forward, when, when the woman goes on maternal leave and comes back, what are the implications? How is the work environment looking how does it accommodate the new okay. um the new woman mm. who, who has literally i mean come back from mm. home mm. i think the structure still remain the same it's not it's not so much accommodating in terms of promotion but are we do we still look at the parameters that were standardized or we adjust those parameters mm. to relegate them in terms of 
opportunities and advancements do we say that oh she has a child and she wouldn't make time do we, we did we take decisions do we even involve the women in those decision making or we just take those decisions at our own whims and all of that so it has to be participative it has yeah. to be much more engaging so that that voice is there and you know i always just say that there has to be buy-in from the executive the executive have to be committed to making sure that gender equality itself is not just a priority mm -hmm. it has to be a value you know priorities do change mm -hmm. a company can just say now that i mean our priority now is to give representation for women or give women access opportunity but if something else comes up when the i mean the issue about the bottom line comes up the company's focus will divert yeah. and look at that yeah. but if gender equality is viewed as an organizational value it is it is actually tied to the corporate philosophy the corporate strategy where they are being intentional about enforcement making sure that even executives and those in the c-suits mirror and model the value so once we see that we see that replicated at the lowest level at the front line is even in teams we see representation then that model is being reinforced yeah. but when leaders in in those positions don't mirror those values it becomes difficult and companies or employers should take an entrenched position in that to make sure that that is visible to us and also most of the time it becomes challenging for women to actually rise through the ranks or get to the position where they contribute effectively to key decision making for organizations that do outsource their recruiting to external companies or i mean rpos recruitment process outsources what happens is that Sometimes, you know, when you don't make, you don't prioritize a recruitment to embrace representation or have a balanced representation, you give room for the, um, the recruiter to decide which kind of um, applicant yeah. to present. So a recruiter can just, I mean, out of 10 applicants can present about nine males and just one female yeah. or seven and yeah. still three, which is still not balanced. Okay. So if you're an employer and you are very much, um, focused on ensuring representation you want to do a 50 50 representation so if you are looking for 10 people you want to make sure that you may ensure that you have five males and five females mm -hmm. and that is presented in that one when you're building capacity you know that you are building capacity for all the genders mm -hmm. and it's not just um tailored towards one yeah. and and when you are taking key decision on succession planning you know where to place who yeah. and we see representation in terms of men women when this person is no more this person can take that it shouldn't just be um, a plan that literally has men all over and women cannot be found anywhere so it has to be prioritized it has to be i mean entrenched in the corporate strategy so that it's, it's much more reflect and you know there's also a danger of just having it on paper and yeah. just like a lip service just saying oh we actually do it but practically is it being implemented do we see it i mean do we see the evidence mm -hmm. no so it shouldn't just be lip service. We actually have to see that as, as working, taking key actions, getting women to, to, to do that. And also women, we also have to make sure that we, when we get that opportunity, we build a good case. We actually affirm that, yes, we deserve it. But most of the time, we get opportunities and we don't even pull our weight. We okay. feel that we've arrived mm -hmm. and that is it. But that also, that it doesn't give or it doesn't um, challenge yeah. management to do more. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. that shouldn't be... Um, the fact that we've arrived mm. it should actually be an opportunity to get more women to come on board because if you get there and you perform yes. what you're telling management or the employer is that i'm capable and if i'm capable it means my other party is capable so this opportunity should be extended to my colleagues as well so anybody who gets opportunity to get to the top should not see herself as as, as, as the one mm. but she should see herself as an extension an extension of the entire group the entire um, gender, gender. Mm -hmm. so that the fighting really yeah. continues. It's not really a fight, you know. Gender <laughs> equality is not really a fight. It's just um, a case. equal. Yeah, yeah. just a, you are case. building a case yeah. for all. Yeah. Yeah. And you know it, that it doesn't also necessarily mean equal outcomes for um, the same outcome mm -hmm. for all genders. Yeah. It's yeah. just uh, it's just um, respecting outcome, what mm -hmm. everybody deserves. Yeah. It's just equal opportunities. Okay. So when you are providing opportunities in terms of resources. Op I mean, career opportunities. Mm -hmm. It should be equal for everybody. If you have worked hard, if you've built your case, you have pulled your weight, whatever opportunities are available, it should be made available to all. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be any um, restrictions or limitations that, oh, she's she has a child, oh, she's this, she's that. And you know, 
gender equality also means that even now we awareness is now being made about our mental our social well-being mm -hmm. as well you know employers organizations also have to think about how best they can accommodate both genders yeah. sometimes you there is burnout now there is so much burnout at work mm -hmm. we go to work from monday to friday yeah. consistently over a period there is no break mm -hmm. Or because you don't want to be absent. People people are not absent at work. They are present, but their mind is yeah. not on work. Exactly. You get it. So it's very important yes. that we find ways and means to um, make the structures flexible where parents, men and women, can spend time of work and focus on, 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 on family and their life. So that when they come to work, they know it's, it's actually full-time work and all of that. Then their attention and productivity is much more required. Than wow. it already is. Thank you so much. Don't you think much of what we face, Martha, is about culture? You talked about some of, I mean, like the scenario you described, you being the boss mm. of an organization. But when you go to places, you need to let the man, you mm. know, front for you. Is it not cultural? Well, sometimes? Cool. I, who, who, who made the culture culture? Human <laughs> beings. <laughs> there are some places you go to buy food. Yeah. And if you are the first person buying, they will ask you to wait for a man to come and buy before you buy. Oh, no, this one I've not heard it before. Yes, it happens. Because they feel that, <laughs> I don't know where it is, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Because they feel that the man brings some certain kinds of luck. Ooh. So if the man, so even if you, uh, you want to buy, then I have to give the money to him ah. to give to the seller really? before the seller can serve me. This is news. So the first person that must put money into the seller's hands yeah. should be a man. So most times what they do is that if... Has it happened to you before? Yes, it has. I see. Yes, it has happened to me. I was much younger, not now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's happened to me. You I go see. to buy porridge or something. Yeah. You have to queue until a man comes. So sometimes if a man is forced, even if it's a small boy, it's a man. Oh, yeah? So sometimes you'll have to stop maybe a boy going to school and say, oh, come. <laughs> and say, collect this money from this girl and give. Then they'll say whatever they have to say and they, know, they will now save you. I see. Yes. This happens. It happens a lot. <laughs> it happens a I lot. see. So some of these things cultural, you know, others to maybe it's misunderstanding. Uh -huh. Yeah, some may be religious and all of that. Anyway, but um, uh, still on matter, what, what do you think is the impact of some of these limiting beliefs on, on women, especially? Um, there are some of the beliefs I think that it was brought in to cut down certain behaviors long time ago. Okay. Depending on how their setting or their structure was done to tame certain behaviors. So, for example, we are told that when you are bathing, you don't sing. That is also yeah. because the soap can get into your oh, mouth. Yes, or when you are cooking, yeah. don't sing yeah. because you can probably, yes. It doesn't mean that some horror somewhere or kai kai will come and catch you. But that is what kids are told. Yeah. So, I think that some of these beliefs were, were probably put in there to tame certain behaviors. Well, now things have changed. Or probably the women at that time were not as assertive as we are now mm -hmm. and probably made certain mistakes that maybe uh, uh, the consequences were so much for the men yeah. to, to, to handle that maybe they now came and said that women are not supposed to. I'm just... Uh, 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 yes. By the end of the day, things have happened. A lot of things have changed. Big women, like a lot of women are in big positions. And they are doing so well. You put a man there, and it's 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 mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that would go wrong. So I think that's when what it. What about the charge that he 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 also his, he made one mm -hmm. of those allegations that people hold that, for example, if women are put at places of decision making, they are a bit emotional. As for emotions, we can't take it out. We, of course, women are emotional, mm -hmm. but sometimes being emotional and taking certain decisions help. I see. Yes. I've, I'm, I'm a leader. Mm. I've been emotional sometimes. There are times <laughs> that my, my tears, I won't do them. Like, let me think about it. And if it, let's do this, um, let me think about it. Because, or there are times that somebody does something against us and they feel that, no, handle this person with iron hands. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, let's be careful. You know, we are emotional. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, sometimes you might even go back and need those people's help. But sometimes men would handle this 
giddy giddy and they will end up messing the whole thing so we all have our strengths and our weaknesses and each of them it will work for us but i said well if you are put in a leadership position me i've learned that some things the hard way mm -hmm. so if you are put in that position there are things you learn the hard way and you'll be able to mentor other young women not to make certain mistakes so men come on you 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 guys also have your own mistakes you make don't stop putting the blame on us men also have serious mistakes that you really really yeah. really make but because you're a man you will never admit it yeah you feel that you are the man. Mm -hmm. And per religion, the man is the head. Per, per whatever, the man is there. So sometimes men are unable to come down a bit mm -hmm. to listen to a woman. I and I hear some men say, do they ever take an advice from a woman? Just because, like you said, women are emotional. Interesting. But do you think, for example, that um, uh, so, like parliament, for example, in Ghana, <laughs> women are very low. Uh, compared to the number of men, they are underrepresented. Do you think that the women themselves are not coming forward and going through all that it takes in order to compete to be in There are lots of factors. Okay, we are told that women are more than men in this country, right? Oh, yeah. Why don't we have a woman president? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm building a case. Now, one, women are not giving... Of course, sometimes, quote-unquote, the deceivers give us some few women to be in parliament and those things. Those ah, things can be, why be there. Mean, but I also think that... But they're not going to do my role is too... Did you vote? That's that? the point I, I am making. Okay. So sometimes, <laughs> too, we are not able to support our own. Yeah. Sometimes, too, other women are also not competent. Mm -hmm. I've met women who have been extremely competent. Mm -hmm. And I'll push them. And because of this, if she were on the ticket yes. of one of the two main political parties, she would have won. Probably. <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe she they, wasn't supported for places. Yes, they, yes, they that's one. Chosen. And there are also some women that I see who are not competent. I see. Not at all. <laughs> there are some. There are some women that I work with. I can go and sleep. I know when we we're doing the MasterCard Foundation project, I got at a point I was so tired. I just called my peer and I was like, I can't do this. And I just called some too many in my team. They were like, they were like, people, man, go and sleep. You got this. Mm. At the end of the day, everything was done. I see. There's another project I was working on, and I was working with some other women. Yeah. They messed up things for me. So we have women who are extremely competent. But because of this thing about feminism and women empowerment, mm. we think we should push every woman. Mm. So in as much as we are campaigning that women should be given opportunities, you need to push yourself. So for example, there are some things or some, some, some uh, education or let me say some knowledge I wouldn't want to acquire on a normal day. But before somebody can push me to a certain position, I always want to be the president of Ghana one day. But before I can get to that position, I will need certain qualifications academically. Yeah by experience by certain values if i don't have that capital <laughs> no one can push me there even with the grace of god if i don't have those things yeah. i won't get there i need to prepare myself for the next 20 30 50 years from now for certain positions i would want to get yeah. so a lot of women are sitting down exactly through all these experiences exactly so you can't just sit together. down yeah. and say that so for example on the reflection show, there are times that I say I want to do this production for this number of days and I'm sick, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. But I want certain things. Mm -hmm. There are times that, look, there was a day somebody sent me um, a grant proposal. I think it was a Friday night and said that the deadline was on Wednesday. It was like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, five days to push a grant proposal. Mm -hmm. I didn't sleep for days. You didn't. Even though they were looking for women. Mm -hmm. To, to push it, like women-led organizations. And surprise, I was the only one from the north that, that pulled through. So at the end of the day, if I just sleep and say I want to pray, I will not get that. So women sometimes should, should push energy, should sacrifice. We are empowering you, we are empowering ourselves. Look, there was a time that for some time, a whole day I hadn't eaten, I was doing production. And they were like, so they were like, let Martha eat before. Because yeah. if you watch most of my episodes, mm. sometimes like, I'm so tired. That's the last episode. Because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't eaten. Yeah. And I thought that if I want to eat, I'll be so, I'll be so tired to go back on sex. A lot of women are not pushing energy into work. I'm a woman. Mm. Women empowerment. I deserve it. Mm. 
what do you have? Yeah. You don't even have a diploma. You don't even have a degree. You don't even have, uh, 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 what was the name, some qualifications. Yeah. And you want that. So if you want certain positions, work for it. Yes, yes. Don't, awesome. don't, don't let it to be like, because we are women, we are giving women empowerment, let's give it to you. Yeah. You will go and mess things up. And you will block the chances of competent right. women that can do the job. So uh, there's so much that we yeah. can really do to support ourselves yeah. as also, women. Um, yes, I, I believe in uh, what Mata is talking yeah. about in terms of people working at it. Yeah. However, I mean, you asked the question if this limiting beliefs mm. are having impact on women mm. in a way or the other. Yes, we talked about the fact that it's cultural. Mm -hmm. There are some religious. Yeah. Uh, mm. There are some of them that are actually systemic. Yeah. You know, so you can talk about uh, systemic limiting yeah. beliefs yeah. that are ingrained in institutions. Okay. Right, so yeah. once it's institutionalized, there's a conditioning yeah. of a whole society yeah, yeah, yeah. or a group of people. Yeah. So, assuming your parents, so you think we are the cause, we are the, the cause, no, <laughs> yeah. not just the men. I think it's both ways, you know, okay. because it's, and it is the women themselves. Yes, that's what yeah. thing. Who does the FGM? The women themselves goes to, to yes, yes, but you see, it's the condition that's, that's what, what yes, that. the condition has condition. made it. For example, it said that. And I hear a lot of people talk about it. And sometimes when they talk about it... Oh, it's a major in sociology. Yeah, I do sociology. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I mean, I oh, my first degree. Like condition, <laughs> social condition. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, there's a whole notion. And people talk about it. Sometimes when people talk about it, because of the way they talk about yeah. it, people mm -hmm. don't want to listen about yeah. patriarchy. Uh -huh. That's rule of men, <laughs> right? Yeah. And when you go further into it, yeah. it is a thinking that men are natural leaders in society. Mm -hmm. Men are supposed to dominate. The world revolves around the world, around men, so this conditioning somehow, be it cultural, mm -hmm. you were born into it. My, one of my mentors talked about a story, a story of a monkey, Doctor El Pebi, mm -hmm. talked about it recently, about about let's say let's five monkeys yeah. placed in a, a basket, mm -hmm. you know, a little taller one, the mm -hmm. tall ones, and then cold water was being poured on them. Mm -hmm. Any time they try to mm -hmm. climb out of the Basket, that tall yeah. basket. So with time, because of the coldness of the water, yeah. they, they they become intimidated uh -huh. and they feel that any time you try to, mm. do, that's what will happen, will happen to you. To so the really first try. one tried, yeah. the poured water. Yeah. The second one tried, poured water. Mm. The third one, fourth one, yeah. and the fifth one. Yeah, so they all the experienced. Condition. They all experienced <laughs> this thing. So <laughs> then an um, outside one was brought in. Uh -huh. He was not used to the cold water. He was not used to the cold water. <laughs> but when he was placed in and he tried to climb up, yeah. all the rest in the body pulled him down. He says, no, you can't do that. <laughs> he says, okay. And he tried again. Yeah. He tried again. And after a while, yeah. he became conditioned to the thinking mm. that you can't climb up. Mm. Mm. So they stopped pouring the yeah. water. And the more they brought in new monkeys, yeah. the more all the yeah, monkeys, monkeys already yeah. in were yeah. pulling it down. It became a conditioning that you as a, so example the thinking is that as a woman you can't rise above this as a woman you can't lead as yeah. a it's a toxic uh, narrative that has okay. you know and everybody has bought into everybody. that one the second part is that naturally people don't think that women are limited in any way mm. have, have to be surprised you mm. a, a place that i work in a colleague mm -hmm. was having a strong debate with one young lady who just joined national service mm. You know what? The lady was like, no, women are disadvantaged. Mm. Women don't have opportunities. Mm. And this young man says, no, 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 no. You guys are just making noise. Mm. What do you mean by women? Not? And I said, okay, fine. I, I, I want you to link, listen to this mm. very carefully. When we talk about na ma minority groups, sometimes it's because we're not consciously thinking about what they might be going through. Mm. So I asked him, the office we were in there, I asked him, when we should, if we should have employed Yeah physically disabled person mm. yeah, in our workplace yeah. how would the person, would the person climb up we have a story okay. story building but it's all all stairs and there's no disabled ramp run uh, climbing up you know I so see. i asked him how do you think yeah. the person would have climbed yeah. up yeah yeah, yeah. This is, uh, but there's no way for the person mm. to have mm. climbed up so and i said why have, you have pushed the person out so i asked him why do you think so Mm. He said, "Well, I mean, there's no disabled person here." And I said, "Yes, ah. that's the whole thing." You know, because <laughs> it's not a way for one to come. Our lived yeah. experience. Sometimes yeah. we yeah. ignore yeah. it, we overlook it. Yeah. Then I asked him, "Okay, assuming we're all male here and we had male washrooms, yeah. right? Yeah. And there was no female mm. here. Do you think about when women have their menstrual mm. issues? Issues. Yeah. 
when they use the washroom yeah. and all yeah. of that, how they, you know, take care of themselves and all. Do we have, do you think would have made provision uh, for mm. all of those things? Then he says, no, I mean, if it's all men, why would we think about it? And I say, yes, that's the point. You <laughs> know, see. sometimes, but don't think so you're talking about parliament, that's yeah. what I'm coming yeah. to. Yeah. If the people making the laws mm -hmm. are all men, <laughs> that's likely, yeah. it's not likely they will think more about pushing women. Issues. We give only the Ministry of Gender. That yeah. was the, the that, longest one before the others. Given yeah. that, the concentration is, is minimal. Yeah. You know, because the thinking is not broadened. Because you, you think male yeah. first and foremost. You think about what works for male yeah. first and foremost. But when you, if you should, should have had a female yeah. on the panel, a female in parliament, they'll be pushing issues yeah. now that brings you to the awareness that oh, there are real issues about female that are not being added. That's true. And when I said that, he was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I've never thought about it that yeah. way. And I said, yes, that's all the lady is trying to tell you. So yes, there are systemic issues, there yeah. are cultural issues, with there's conditioning with yeah. of, of society. Mm -hmm. And gradually, it takes awareness mm -hmm. creation, mm -hmm. it takes uh, campaigns, yeah. It takes all of this education for us to first and foremost for males to understand that yes, sub subconsciously we are taking the women out, out yeah. you know, yeah. and then some women also need to know that subconsciously they have been conditioned to think that mm. men are more superior and men are you know supposed to be the leaders, they're supposed to dominate and all of that. And we confuse a lot of things. Yeah. Yes. Now you know to change that mindset and then also give themselves opportunity. Mm you know, to I be see. able to take up some of the opportunities that come to them as well. Master, my final question to you, uh, before we wrap up, must women choose between having a successful career and hmm. being good mothers? It's like asking if your father and your mother, which of them would you choose? <laughs> I think that having a successful career and being a good mother should, should be, both should be prioritized. Ah, okay. We shouldn't put one. If not, what example would you be setting for your children? Especially your daughters. Okay. That is where the system continues yeah. to feel that mommy gives birth, take care of the house, and it's just in the house. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have a system whereby a woman can have three months or four months to stay at home, after four months, the baby is a bit enough. We can probably have a nanny, or some organizations even have this. Yeah. Um, um, yes, where you can take your child to uh, to work yeah. and put them there. Can we change some of these systems? Maybe the, if the child is like one year or two yeah. years, you can put the child into school, or probably a nanny. Mm -hmm. Let's not see a woman asking for a nanny to be a lazy woman. Mm -hmm. Some people think that mm -hmm. I see. people say, "Oh, you, you won't bond with your child," and what what? It's only a way to deny the woman of help. I agree with that one extent. But you see, when women need help, let's give them help. So I think that our career is very important. Someone asked me a question today and it was like, uh, I've had that a, a lot. Like if you get somebody who wants to get married to you today and he says that um, resign from, let's say, your, your foundation and your NGO, your TV show, and just come and either take a normal job and leave the public space, would you? And I'm like... Why, why would you even tell me that kind of thing in the first? But at the end of the day, this is, like, I, I, I have a book. I was telling my, my staff the last time. I read it to them. I have a book. I've written about 20-something important questions I will ask any man I want to get married to. Hey, yes. this man. I want to see this Yes. <laughs> because. Well, that's, that's been intentional. Uh, yes. And people like, uh, because I told them that at the end of the, one of them. Give me one of the questions. <laughs> oh, one, of, oh, one of the questions I'm going to ask you is what if we get married? The man is watching it. Dear future husband, what if we get married and fertility is a problem? If I am the problem, how would you act? If you are the problem, how would it act? How would you act? If fertility, no, because people get married and you can never tell what fertility So let, let me find out from you. How, how you will handle infertility hmm. in our marriage. Don't ask that question. <laughs> I have to ask. <laughs> I have to ask. And finances, what, what do we understand about um, finances? Hey. Financial times. You have to tell me how. And also in the career perspective. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to tell you that I want to go very far in my career. Yeah. Right now, mm -hmm. you see me, I'm on TV. I want to be a reflection show probably on five TV stations mm -hmm. in a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that is how far I want to go. Yeah, I want to go. Free. It, that's me. <laughs> I, 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 I want to go into politics. Oh, yes. As far as my eyes can see. <laughs> I'm not the regional minister. Oh, <laughs> president. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> minister. <laughs> president. I want to go to the UN. Yeah, I want to go to wherever that I want to go. Best female UN secretary if, general. Yes. So I, I, I asked a young man before. Yeah. Imagine your wife like or Henry Gifty Auntie. Imagine a wife like Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts, mm -hmm. Joyce Meyer, mm -hmm. Paula White. Can you be a husband to such a woman? Your answer will determine. The women in the yes. Place. So I, I needed to 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 envision Far in the next beyond. twenty. So if let's say for a particular season, yeah. for one month, I'm out of the house. Yeah. That's one of the questions. How how would you do? Would you allow me to leave the house for a, a whole month because I have to work? Mm -hmm. So if you're not able to give me answers now, mm -hmm. then I won't risk it. Because at the end of the day, you get into the marriage, and you know the you difficult saw. thing about our work is that. Your divorce will cripple your career. Mm -hmm. Because when you get married and you now want to get, have a divorce, that is where, hey, now, hey, women empowerment, and she can't stay in her husband's house, and all, these issues are going to come up. Meanwhile, it might not be because you're not submissive. Mm -hmm. And that's where the young men get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Submission hey. is to your husband, to submit to your own husband. Go and read King James and read NIN. Hey. I, hey. I don't want to go. Me too, right now. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like, it's like, you meet a man today, and so you're not submissive. I'm not your husband. I mean, in, in a, a book that I've written, I've spoken to you about, mm. actually challenged one of this limiting beliefs. Mm. I mean, why should we begin to focus and narrow it down? When the Bible yes. actually says submit to one another, yes, so okay. the same Bible yeah, yeah, yeah. says that you love one another. Is that yeah. Right? So Paul talking about. Uh, wives submit yeah. to mm -hmm. your husband, and then he says, "Husbands love love, love husband. your uh, wife, yeah your wife." That one yeah. we have forgotten it though. I mean, <laughs> uh, even where we've not forgotten and we emphasize, it, my point is that at the end of the day, yeah. the Bible is instructive. It says to everybody, yeah. submit to one another. Yeah. And it says to everybody, yeah. love yeah. one another. Yeah. So if we are loving one <laughs> another and we are submitting sure. to one another, yeah. what should be the issue? Yeah. But to the question you ask yeah. about. Um, to say, I mean, the question, it's, it's more or less like asking, can women have it all? Mm. And I ask myself, aren't, aren't women human beings? Mm. Okay. Can human beings have it all? Yes, it's always um, a, a balancing dilemma. Act. It's yeah, a balancing, balancing act, act, you, you know, need to, of that course. human beings yeah. have to navigate sure. in their journey. Sure. Whilst women need to make that decision mm. of their own, I think that uh, businesses and em employers yeah. or HR yeah. need to make that journey Okay, so that's the final question you're okay. answering. What can the HR managers like you mm. do to help uh, women Thank to you. have a, a Thank safe, you. better so, way? So I think that we need to be intentional about it. Okay. First and foremost, it comes by the policies we craft in the workplace. Okay. How are policies gender friendly? Mm. And gender, I'm talking about men and, both and, and women, yeah. you know. How is it? You family? guys don't give us paternity leave. Why? So I'm coming to that. Ah, <laughs> so you know <laughs> how how is it? Because okay, talking about paternity leave, if I'm a strong advocate for paternity leave. Why have now, you why? implemented that your way? No, we have actually you we do? have. We are that for for the uh, hey, forward thinking hey. business. So did that you we have, have paternity leave when you had your twins? Yes, I did. You did yeah, because how that long? was one of the policies I championed at the workplace. How long? For two weeks. You know, I was actually, and, and that's the way to start because even the 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 the, the labor law doesn't have paternity leave in there. Mm. Oh, yes, it's only maternity leave we have. I see. So it's yeah, actually so one you, of the things. And there. see, the reason why I'm pushing it, yeah. and also education needs to go with it because mm. if not, not if education is not going with it, yeah. yeah. what can happen is that men will take it and hey. they will. <laughs> <laughs> Some people take their own. You know. Don't just. They don't, go and don't tell their wives. They don't try. They'll use for their own personal things. So there's a whole education that needs to be. But why am I advocating for yeah. paternity leave? Because I think that the reason for which we should have paternity leave is that when maternity leave is given, yeah. it's for the woman to heal, to rest, yeah, exactly. and to bond with the baby. Yeah, yeah. Now, fathers need to be present mm. to support yeah. the women through yeah. that resting period. Because yeah. if she's supposed to rest, yeah. but the baby is still on her mm. alone. Exactly. Then, yeah, how is she rested? Sure. You mm -hmm. know, the father should be there mm -hmm. to be helping, ah, carrying back. That's such a baby. good HR manager. Oh, yes, I believe ah. in that. Thank you. Oh, you know, so that needs to happen. 
And I think that I, I, the, the Labour Commission needs to look at it. Okay. It should be something that should be pushed in Parliament. Yeah. These policies should be in place. Yeah. And, you know, Write a proposal and, the, and let's push it. I, I'm, I'm in the process of doing that. <laughs> to which, to which Parliament? And the it's reason it's I'm not It's on do now. Again, I'm saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we were starting from somehow. Uh, ah, okay. Exactly. Now. Look at Like, you mean this current Parliament? Hospital, yeah. When uh, women are going to give birth. Yeah. Now, the focusy has been that, okay, men need to be there mm. to support their... Yeah. But most of our hospitals don't have a place for the man no, when you go. No, we go there, we go and stand outside. You stand outside, you sit ah. outside, you doze outside, you sleep That's outside. That's because our, yeah, because about two or three men, and I mean women, are giving birth at the same time. So the rooms are that not... Get yeah. the so I'm not saying, there. yes, have a room ah. for them, make what that arrangement for them. For if you want them to be present... Go to their private you know. hospital. But you see, let's not be like we, we are making the case like about <laughs> men. The yeah, point yeah. is that... We're saying men Actually should be talking, present. Exactly. Okay. You yeah, know, to so to be able to make it sure. helpful for them to be present, Get these policies place. needs yeah. to be in place. <laughs> these rooms needs to be in place. That and then they are, they, they are becoming very part of <laughs> Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, there's there's something very important they need to yeah. do. Exactly. I think also businesses yeah. need to look at remote working options for mothers. Because even yeah. though they go yeah. for that maternity leave, be it four months, like you said, if people add their know, maternity yeah. leave and, mm -hmm. and they come back, it's not just an event, like yeah. they are just coming back. Yeah. And then they still have to go through that period of, so, you know, readjusting exactly. to the workplace and all of that. Mm -hmm. And even that, the feeding continues. So the labor law makes room for one hour, two hours, yeah. you know, for a mother to feed baby mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of that. So it's still there. And what, sometimes they can let them close earlier. That's, that's the point. Before. So yeah. sometimes... Yeah. Is to have a policy that makes them leave early so they can go exactly. and support yeah. the baby at home. Or, like you said, we have a child care at the workplaces. Workplace, yeah. That is family friendly. Yeah. So somebody coming back from maternity exactly. knows that I can still bring my baby and, and the nanny or maybe yeah. the company has yeah. that yeah. Yeah. And, come back. and then come back That's to work. Thing. That is one thing we can do. Then yeah. again, the remote options like we yeah. mentioned, people can come in maybe two two times in a week, in a week and, then work, and yeah. work from home two days, yeah. whichever At way. At least that know. can help to start. So I think now some people are pushing for six months. So I think that now that we have three months, yeah. you can have uh, three, months, three months, yeah, okay. for like, maybe yeah. you come two times in a week yeah. or the baby, when it's, at least by six months, your child will be, yeah. Up to you know. So this policy, yeah. but it has to be intentional. Of course. And I tell women that at the workplace, don't think that things cannot be done mm. until you engage your HR, until you have conversations with your employers, yeah. you cannot know what is possible. And sometimes individual peculiar situations demand that there are some rooms that are made for mm. people. Even I got to know that, I mean, as much as, as HR, sometimes think all women have the same kind of pregnancy. No, mm -mm. some people's pregnancy is so complicated. Of course, yeah. So you That's can a have a straight like jacket a of around some of these things. That's why we put a Some I need bed rest. Exactly, wow. you know. My so wife, what arrangement oh, wow. can you have in place? It's not everybody will have the same normal exactly. pregnancy. Exactly. Yeah. So so HR also needs to be intentional, yeah. be it a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, read around these things. Try to see how you can support yeah. people at the workplace yeah. to make sure that they are giving their very best. Because also, ultimately, also, employers wants to keep their best talents. Yeah. And if your best talent happens to be the one going through some of this situation, are you going to say we're going to just let the person mm, go? Mm. No, you want to put in measures in place that help to keep some of these best mm, talents mm. in the workplace. So hey. I think HRs needs to do more. Uh, I think the Labor Commission needs <laughs> yeah, to do more. Yeah. Our parliamentarians need to yeah. put in laws and policies mm. that, that can help, you know, make have a more equitable and equal yeah. Uh, yeah. world and society yeah. for our yeah. people. I believe in this and I'm passionately talking about it because I think that we can do better we can as do a generation, better. as a nation, you know, and as a people in organization. Awesome. Thank you very much. I need to let you <laughs> rest a bit, you know, so that right. we can uh, have a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. um, breaking Barriers, a journey towards gender equality at the workplace is what we've been discussing. Thank you very much, my guests, Eric Edem Damanka. He is the group head of HR, I mean, Group Head of Talent, but that's really about HR and Corporate Affairs at BTL Africa. And then um, I have Mata and Nabila, Women Empowerment Activist and TV show host, and then also CEO of Mata Inspired Foundation, and Janet Emefa Agbedo, HR Consultant and Tech at Tech Optimal.
My name is Conrad Kakraba. Thank you very much and happy International Women's Day to all our women. Bye-bye for now. Truth. Truth.